Here she is, guys, along with Frank Mastromoto, co-owner and president of Aspen Comics and sideshow concept artist J.P. Movinga. Thanks for joining us, guys. It's super cool to have you on the show. Um, now, just to start off the bat, this is a prototype, so she's very fragile, so we'll try not to move her too much, but we're really, really excited to show her off. The first time we showed her in person was at New York Comic Con, and she was insanely popular with fans and press, and we're, we were all excited to see her for the first mm -hmm. time. So um, let's just ask some questions. To, we have questions for Frank, questions for JP, and then you guys should send in as many questions as you want. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the character of Aspen and her origins sure. just to start out? Sure. We're really excited because coming up in 2018 is Aspen's 20 year anniversary. Oh, and, that's uh, so awesome. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that. It's crazy. Yeah. Tw over 20 years ago, Michael Turner created Aspen Matthews, created the property Fathom. It was something that was an idea when he and his brother went on a shark dive in Tahiti and they were underneath the water. and. He saw this incredible world that is just right below the surface. Oh my gosh. And at the time, he was cranking on the title Witchblade and wanted to come up with his own property. And Fathom is what wow. developed from his incredible mind. Uh, he and his wow. mom took a, took a trip, came up with a lot of the character ideas, a lot of the story lines that populated through the very first volume of Fathom. And it's been going strong ever since for us. We're really excited. She's. Mike always liked to explain that it was based off the aquatic ape theory, that if man evolved onto land, what if they also evolved underwater? So she's a child of, of the blue, that's what the underwater beings are called, mm -hmm. but she wound up growing up on land for reasons that you find out in the book, which I brought it, in case, <laughs> in case you want to know. But uh, yeah, so if you check out Fathom, uh, it's an amazing sci-fi action-adventure story. Uh, Mike, I mean, there's no shark attacks. There's no. You know, she doesn't talk to fish or anything like that. She has water abilities where she's able to manipulate it and transform into you know different weapons and things like that. But overall, it, it's been going strong for us for 20 years, so we're really excited about it. She's so cool. And so, what do you think though? Is like like if you were trying to get someone to read Fathom for the first time, like how would you draw them in? I mean. Like, well, aside from the obvious, like ob right? there's an obvious <laughs> like, reason obvious, right? is like she's really amazing. She's from two separate worlds, and so there's kind of that appeal, yeah, you know. Exactly. Aside from the sci-fi elements and everything that Mike put into the book, and I, I guess JP, we, we would also move aside the aesthetics because Michael Turner did such an incredible job of artwork, and that's Absolutely. what everyone gravitates yeah. towards from the get-go is when you when you look at Mike's art and the amount of detail and just sheer passion that he put into the project that's what's allowed it to endure for 20 years now but the story itself we're really proud of because it has been we we have longevity which which we're happy a lot of people really like the story that mike created uh, it went through six volumes we have multiple spin-offs and i think people just relate to her because she's not a damsel in distress she's really trying to come into her own to discover who she is but also take charge of the life that she's now presented with which i think a lot of people you know that move or have different things going on in their life can can attest to so uh, for us developing the story and, and pushing her character forward it's been great with getting feedback from fans and incorporating that and also making sure that she's relatable uh, we, we uh, of course she's beautiful she's a girl in a bikini it's in the water. I, I mean, <laughs> we, we get so much flack for that all the time, but I mean, she's not going to be in a parka. But the thing um, is, like, she's a girl in a bikini and she's in water and that, but she's so much more powerful than that. Like, I, I've read a lot of the Fathom comics myself, and she was never the type of girl who was just going to, like, let someone save her. So I think that a, a huge appeal for for people getting into Fathom would be like exactly what you said, the element of figuring out who you are, coming into your own, realizing that you have all these abilities and then just freaking kicking ass, <laughs> right? Um, so JP, what were some of the challenges that you faced coming, um, bringing, you know, like Michael Turner's amazing character that he created to a sideshow premium format? Yeah, I mean, uh, so big picture, just trying to capture the legacy because yeah. there's there's so much there as far as his style, the, the content he generated, the story, the you know, it's like 
what is it that a fan would look at and say, this is the one, right? So there's so many looks, so many different uh, versions of her in the story and so on. And so that, to me, that was the, the biggest part. I think, um, for me, you remember in that time, that was like the only character of that type. You had a lot of like the big guns and the people getting their, you know, and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And this is a marine biologist with a career, right? Like you're saying, a woman, certainly she's powerful, she's empowered. But just in her normal life, even she has a career. She's like, you know, yeah. doing stuff. She's capable. So we wanted to capture all of that. Um, Michael Turner had a, he was an amazing designer, right? Like we sit here and we do this stuff, but we, this guy was drawing all these the, the armors with the rhythms and all that. So, but it, it was 2D. Mm -hmm. And so trying to get an, an, an expression of that in 3D was the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, we worked with Dan Ulrich, who's a tremendous sculptor. Um, and it was just going back and forth with him saying, okay, well, let's look at this area or this part of the armor and try to convey the, put those rhythms into the armor. That was a big part of it and making it asymmetrical and giving her like the motion and the energy. And um, People are fun, actually though. asking <laughs> about the armor. Can you tell us a little bit about what type of, are they bones? Like what, what is her armor made from and what, what storyline does it come from? It's coral. It's coral? Yeah. That's amazing. In the first volume, you find out that as, like I said, with them evolving under the water, while man was on land creating fire and, you know, learning how to develop things, they were already well, way more advanced and learning how to utilize their surroundings. And the coral was incorporated due to it being so organic and working with the body so well. Mike did a lot of research at the beginning to see how that would translate, and that's why so many of the different characters in the Fathom universe have the armor that's built out of the different types of coral from around the world. Wow. There's the that's fire cool. ones and the ice <laughs> ones and all different ones that he, he wound up creating. It's that's really fun. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So then what is your favorite part of the process of taking a legacy and then, you know, making it into a 3D? Like what... It's, it's, a, it's an awkward question, but like, you know, you're, you're taking someone's two-dimensional legacy and creating this beautiful piece, a, a, a whole other work of art so out of it. Goofy is going to sound the best part is when it's done because you're not stressed out anymore. Um, <laughs> seriously, I mean, it's when somebody does that kind of work, that's, that's just amazing. And you looked at it and like, you know, 20 years ago, I was a kid just starting in the industry and, and this was, you know... Um, I think the best part was uh, working with the different artists that were a part of it, um, getting everyone's best, getting the kind of responses. And usually it takes two or three tries before people are like the light turns on, like, okay, I get it. And all of a sudden, like the whole team is synchronized. And that's to me, that's the best feeling, you know. And I thought we got an amazing result. Like you expect it to be awesome. And then when it's done, it still blows your mind. Like mm -hmm. it went to a different level. So I thought, for me again, that's just the best part. That's amazing. We have uh, quite a few questions about the base, about how was the base sculpted, how was it molded, how do you get the translucent effect. And uh, while you're answering <laughs> those questions, they want Susan to measure the width of the base. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so originally with the base, we just, again, wanted to capture uh, splashing water. Um, one of the things that I like to do in a composition is you want it to, to move. Like when you turn it at all angles, you have something interesting. Like, see? Um, exactly. Uh -huh. so it's if about you, 10 and a half inches wide, just <laughs> so you guys know. If you look at the Aspen logo, it's a circle, and it kind of has like the yin-yang thing oh, going on. You have a lot of yeah, like, waves oh, yeah. in the thing. And so like, um, what's interesting is, so Michael Turner obviously loved science. He loved water. Um, but if you look at the basic element of life, say DNA, it's in a helix. So I thought, okay, let's get the helix composition in the waves. You know, didn't put it out there, but really that's, that's where that thought came from. And we just wanted something that would go around the figure. But also you get a sense that each section, the main ones, are moving according to her hands. So you have a sense that she's powerful. She's actually moving the water. That's so cool. It's um, easily the most ridiculous water effect I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I, I marvel at it every time I see it. And uh, thankfully, I've got to see it more often than not. But it, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's beautiful. Dan Ulrich, he really nailed it. He's, he's a great artist. Like, he didn't know the material that well at first. And so he's looking at it. He's figuring it out. We're going back and forth. And next thing you know, he's like a rock star on it. So we got that, and it's um, it's obviously cast and clear, and so it's painted towards the bottom, so it's more opaque, and then towards the top, it's just a bit more translucent, and then we put 
a uh, couple things on it to simulate the foam effect on the top surface there. I can't there. Even and deal with how cool she looks. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, what is your personal favorite little touch on this piece that you know people might not notice at first glance, but you know that it's there? Same question when he when JP's done. Oh. Uh, that you wouldn't notice? That, like, if someone is like, <laughs> wow, this piece is amazing, I'm going to get that, but maybe they don't know the intricacies. Like, Somebody had mentioned an Easter egg in the base. There is yeah, an Easter egg. We are, we're going to talk uh, about that in a second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think everything is pretty much there. I mean, I just enjoyed the, you know, getting the armor in a place where we liked it. Um, I think if people have a chance, you know, you get it. And everybody should get it, by the way. Um, <laughs> but if you look really closely, the armor actually has multiple layers, just like in the book. Yeah. So it's almost like some of it is under yeah. and then other stuff on top. And you have the straps that hold it together. And when you think so. about coral, that's how coral grows as well. Like it yeah. grow, grows in layers. Like you'll see like a bed and then you'll see a bed on top of another bed. So it just, it works. And yeah. then... Frank has a story about... Well, it's cool. Yeah, because a lot of people <laughs> I see, Sean Pierce and a bunch of people are asking about Ernie. So Ernie, the little seahorse, so Mike created that little guy. And a quick little story for those of you that might not know, in every single issue of Fathom that Michael drew, he would hide Ernie the seahorse in there, so he'd have to try to search for him, and it became a cool little Easter egg for fans to hunt for and find. So Ernie became one of our pseudo mascots of Aspen Comics and we've presented him in a whole bunch of different all ages stories and things like that but hiding him in the statue when these guys were first designing it I was like hey is this possible and David <laughs> I was like of course that'd be so cool <laughs> and so uh, it's great because when you look at the statue from the front you don't see Ernie but then as you move it around then he's kind of hidden there as a little Easter egg so it harkens back to what Michael did with the actual comic books years and years ago, and here it is now on the brand new statue that Sideshow's created. So that, that's just awesome to see. And it's kind of amazing that you t you told us the story before we went on camera. And if you actually go back to when she was revealed at New York Comic Con, mm -hmm. you can see the staff discovering live Ernie because we <laughs> we also didn't see him from the front at first yeah. and then when we came around with the camera we were like oh she has like a buddy like <laughs> it was pretty pretty amazing so good job with the Easter egg because it it is very truly an Easter egg you cannot see it from the front yeah, I've seen a few people question the composition why he was hidden mm -hmm. why is he at the front and it makes complete yeah. sense yeah uh huh that's awesome how long did it take to complete this Robert wants to know she is 22 inches tall. The video said that, and the video is accurate. <laughs> I don't know Robert that... Robert from Facebook wants to yeah. know how long it took to, to complete the statue. Uh, I don't know that we measured that. Um, so, uh, gosh. Many weeks. <laughs> Many weeks. <laughs> Two, three months. <laughs> Many no, moons I mean, like, ago. You, you have a lot of steps. So, you, you know, you do concept art, and um, the initial art, I think, was done by Alex Vesenko, a great artist. Um, Took a pass at it, looked beautiful. Sculptor Dan Ulrich worked on it for a while. We got to a certain point, and then we wanted to bring a different uh, dynamism, add some stuff to it. I jumped in, worked on it for a couple weeks with uh, Dan, and then again he knocked it out of the park. And at that point, you know, we get it printed. It goes through, you know, an entire team of people to clean it up, put it together, and our paint department, you know, paints it, and uh, so. Because there's so many steps, and sometimes people are doing different things, it's hard to really measure. Um, but I would say months. <laughs> yeah. That's accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know for me, you know, many, uh, there were a lot of long days and long nights and trying to figure it out. So, again, you can't measure it. I mean, each piece is a little bit different, and the demands are, you know, what they are. This one had a lot of details and, and things to think about, like, how it's going to work together, and as soon as you turn it, even with the armor, you're discovering new things. So at the last minute, you you know you realize you have to move something, or it's and, just hard to measure. And just so you all know, this translucent water featured arm is the exclusive on her, so it's only going to be available through Sideshow.com. Which, by the way, for you guys who are all excited about her, she goes up for pre-order tomorrow between tomorrow. noon and 3 p.m. Pacific yes. time. Yeah. So tomorrow, that it would for those watching in the future, that's uh, November 16th. Um, and 
If you would like to RSVP for her, you can go to sideshow.com slash aspenpf. So I just want to throw that in there for all of you asking when you can get her. We have somebody on Facebook asking whether Ernie is part of the water or if he can de- be detached. Is he a separate? Well, this is the prototype, so we can't necessarily answer that question right at this moment because right now he looks like he's he's in there. Um, but that you know we don't we don't know well, once it goes through production. Yeah. yeah. And then shout out to Greg from Facebook who has a fathom tattoo on his thigh. Wow, nice. Pixar what? didn't happen. <laughs> Pixar didn't happen, man. Tag us on Instagram. And David and a lot of others from in the chat are asking, can you? Are there any other characters in the works? Well, what an awesome question. I I don't think right? we don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ho- hopefully, hopefully this one does really well, and then maybe we can have some discussions. But I, I will have to see. Creighton on Facebook says so. The coral of the story is that the statue is awesome. <laughs> oh <also> my god, <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Uh, another touch that um, our project manager on this showed me right before the show was that. If you put her in different lights, she also looks different. Like her hair is actually wet. There's like a water effect on the hair as well because she is coming out of the ocean. So obviously she's not going to have dry hair. So paint put this detail on it that made it so when it catches the light, her hair looks wet. Yeah, yeah. Kitty just made a face because she's never noticed that touch before. And neither had I before the project manager pointed it out. And I was like, oh, my God, this This is is so cool. So we put in a few effects to try to make it look like the book. Like it's actually rendered in some of the colors that the colorists use in the book as opposed to like our conventional kind of like paint approach. That's awesome. So that's something that people may kind of notice with the... And low profile gamers asking if there's significance to the medallion on her neck piece. Uh, There is. It's her family crest uh, in the book. The necklace actually plays a big, big part in the storyline. So definitely check it out if you can. Yay. I'm I'm just so excited about her. Um, Yeah, we we pretty much covered all of the details about her, her exclusive and... Yeah, any, anything else you guys want to point out? or? Well, of course. I mean, I would be remiss not to just say thanks to all the amazing people that have worked on the Fathom property over the years. I mean, from the original creative team that Michael put together with Joe Weems and J.D. Smith, just creating the look and what made Fathom so amazing. And then throughout the years, everyone that has just put their heart and soul into the property to actually get us to this point. Uh, thank you very much. Truly appreciative. Uh, this is you know, the fruits of that labor, and, and I thank you. Uh, as well, what's really cool, I think, you know, is just this particular statue, because Aspen fans who know us know we've done a few different Aspen statues in the past, different ones and ones that we did, and we're completely proud of those, but this is on a, just a whole different level. I mean, just the look and feel, the size, the, the way that JP and all the amazing people here just created their own version of this character uh, that that's probably the biggest question I've gotten since this announcement came out, especially at New York Comic Con, was, oh, well, is it based exactly on Mike's art or you know things like that? And uh, I'm happy it's not. I mean, he took some of the most greatest inspiration from Michael's art and just made it into its own creation, which to me is is just astounding. Uh, so I want to say thanks for putting such incredible effort into it because it just turned Sean out fantastic. Peters, or not Sean Peterson. Someone wants to know when you're drawing your own issue of Fathom. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we, we had a kind of a different discussion like that. Right? Something. That's awesome. I'll tell you what, any, any opportunity I have to draw this character, I think I'm going to be excited about and take it. Um, for me, um, this piece is is especially cool because it's it's something that I knew a long time ago that I looked at that you know again when I was coming up it's you know Michael's one of those guys that had just something unique that, yeah. that a lot of artists I think looked at and were inspired by and you know just left a tremendous legacy behind and you know like she's talking about like uh, us doing our own version but it's like it is our own version, but I felt like we were really striving to, to yep. capture the spirit of, of that thing. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's Absolutely. a love letter. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, to the nth degree. So Thanks amazing. for letting us play with it, man. No, uh, <laughs> no, we're an independent publisher. You know, We're not owned by some huge company. I know 
making the newest Batmans and Supermans and all the cool stuff is, is awesome. I love all that, that great, all those great properties too. But seeing this come to life and just knowing if Michael Turner was still here, I mean, he'd be drooling. He, he would love it. So, so that's the coolest thing is that we know, I, I mean, you know, being friends with Mike so long, I, I would, I, I think I know what he would like and this I know he would actually love. So, uh, Yes. It's awesome. Also, speaking of Michael Turner, you guys know we have an Instagram after party after the show. Uh, Frank brought with him some of Michael Turner's original artwork from the Fathom mm -hmm. comic books. So we're going to be taking a look at that during the Instagram after party. So you guys are definitely going to want to tune in to our Instagram after party today. It's at Instagram.com slash Sideshow Collectibles. That's where you're going to find us, follow us, and be sure to tune into that after party where we're going to be taking an up close and personal look at original artwork by Michael Turner himself. So that's amazing. Um, what, uh, Sasari wants to know what can we look forward to in Aspen Comics, and is there anything that you can tell us about any upcoming projects? Sure, sure, of course. Uh, what's amazing, what's really cool is next year, as I said, is our anniversary for for fathom 20 years next june so we have a huge huge plan for that with the return of the fathom comic with new trades new books uh next june also marks the 10-year passing of michael turner so we have another huge uh book planned for that uh, mm -hmm. that we're working on now uh, it's going to be going to be a really cool year where we're excited because 20 years of fathom uh this this property has endured through thick and thin and we're really excited to bring some new cool stuff to the fans. So be on the lookout. We're, we're, we just now started to promote all of our new 2018 stuff that starts in February. And then, like I said, all the Fathom stuff will start hitting in June. So uh, not too far away. And is there any um, like tags or... Like, what's your social media handle so that way you, everybody knows where to follow you for announcements? Oh, yeah, we're, we're all over the place. So AspenComics.com is our website, uh, Aspen Comics Facebook. We have our Aspen Comics Instagram, and it's all just Aspen Comics. So really, really simple to find. Uh, we've been promoting the heck out of this. And like I said, all the new stuff for the anniversary is coming up because next year is also our 15-year anniversary for the company itself. Wow. So a lot, so just a lot of milestones. A lot of milestones <laughs> all at the same time. So it's, 2018 is the uh, year yeah, of Aspen. It's everything. Yeah, we're, we're planning a giant tour. We're gonna, I oh, think we have crazy. 21 different convention stops, a few international conventions. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. 21 conventions, man. If, if you guys are looking for us, we shouldn't be too hard to find. That's amazing. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for being on the cool. show. We have another video, and when we come back, we're going to be announcing a winner from last week and doing a short Q&A and uh, giving away some batarangs. You're watching Sideshow Live.